this role right it is very misunderstood in some sense it right. could be anything <laughs> and everything right i mean i remember this one common friend of ours his literal job was to make like the office of the founders right i mean in, in terms of like the yeah. infra that was needed to set up the new office uh, typically the founders office role is uh, probably a 2 3 years role not okay. more than that you eventually move out to a, a specialist role Hello hello we have Jay Sharma here with us in the house today uh, today we will discuss about the different responsibilities uh, what is looked for in a person who works in the founders office very closely with the founders on impactful projects uh, so thanks jay thanks for making the time and joining us here today thanks a lot gaurav for having me here awesome let's get started help me understand a little as to what did you study how did you get to doing what you are doing today and generally a little bit about your background i am a graduate in civil engineering from bits pilani i graduated in 2020 like every other college student i didn't have anything figured out so i took a college placement uh, it was a healthcare consulting job then i then gorav introduced me at, uh, to the startup world uh, then i took up a job at airme it was a growth role very early days at airme then i worked there for a good year year and a half and uh, post that i was trying to figure out what exactly what i wanted to do with my career and i came across this opportunity at newton school uh, so i had a conversation with the founders and then i took up the role got it touch a little bit more upon you know like what did you what do you mean by a growth role at airmeet and like with founders office at newton school also right like a segue into uh, what are you currently doing at newton school and like you know what are the roles and responsibilities there yeah got it. first of all airmeet is a virtual events startup uh, it was started way back in 2019 uh, i joined it when there were around 20 25 people in the company we hadn't achieved product market fit then so we were trying to figure out what exactly should be the customer segment we should be selling it to what should, what exactly should be the product that we should be uh, selling uh, that's the phase that uh, i joined airmeet in my role was effectively to figure out the customer base we should be selling to since it it was the first year of working i had to figure out what exactly i wanted to do in the long term okay so product management was something that i wanted to uh, try as well and i also like the growth side of things basically sales marketing and all those uh, things founders office was one one role that uh, shot to fame probably in 2020 or 2021 yeah so anyway. yeah i uh, got to know uh, about founders office and what exactly uh, does a generalist do from a lot of people around me coming to what newton school is and how exactly i landed up the job so newton school is an edtech startup we are in the mm-hmm. higher tech upskilling space so we have certifications in uh, full stack development data science we have collaborated with foreign universities to offer degrees as well back in 2021 i uh, got up connected me with uh, uh, with siddharth who is the co-founder at newton they were in the search of a generalist who could probably take up a lot of problem statements who could probably scale a new vertical or exactly or figure out what exactly do we need to do as a company uh, right. later on uh, the first project that i uh, got at newton so newton was uh, working in only one space at that point mm-hmm. in time we only had a pay after placement offering so we had pay a pay after placement the offering effectively is a 6 month certification in full stack development the student has to go through the entire curriculum and uh, they only have to pay once they get uh, a ctc of at least 5 lpa my job was to figure out a new vertical or basically a new business stream that newton could enter into so now we call it the prepaid vertical or probably the certifications or degrees that we have so my first task was to figure out how exactly will we do that so we partnered with a couple of universities now then uh, we had to make the product live uh, effectively make the offering accessible to our students right. so had to figure out the entire marketing uh, plan with the marketing team had to set up a sales team uh, who could reach out to our customers basically the admissions counseling could talk to the students uh evaluate their career paths and how exactly could newton help with their career currently 80% of the revenue is coming from the vertical that we oh, set wow. up then so you're saying you were involved with um the process of right from when it was just an idea yeah. to setting it up 0 to 1 and now that contributes to roughly like 80%, 80% oh wow yeah. that, that's big but i want to take a step back right airmeet as you mentioned you were doing like more b2b stuff and from what i understand newton is more b2c yeah so Like how did the founders trust you that you would come from a B two B setup to B two C? So tell me a little bit about you know the process of like you know how did they test you? So tell me a little about that bit as well, please. So what the founders was uh, were looking at uh, was a, an early working professional, probably one two years in their career, who okay. could who could be molded in uh, probably the role that they wanted mm-hmm. eventually. 
basically a smart smart person who could probably scale the uh, scale the vertical or scale the problem statement that they that they eventually would have okay. given how exactly did, uh, did they test me so i had uh, i think three rounds of interviews mm-hmm. the first conversation i had was with siddharth uh, he's the co-founder so we had a conversation around my work uh, work experience at airme what exactly did i do what exactly did uh, i do in my college then i had an assignment round which was uh, to f- figure out if i could probably let's say solve a problem in a very short span of time or probably if if i am resourceful or not what was that assignment so the assignment was so we have an experts team which effectively onboards uh, the instructors and mentors who take okay. classes live classes mentors the students go out throughout their uh, learning journey so my task was to figure out uh, and onboard 20 uh, instructors and mentors in a day so in a I, day yeah okay so i had to figure out different modes did you actually have to do that or like just yeah. present okay this is how i'm going to do it no no we actually had to onboard those people oh, wow well. <laughs> okay so yeah uh, we had to figure out different platforms wherein i could reach out to those people i had to create a strategy of how exactly will i pitch newton to them mm-hmm. what exactly should be let's say uh, what exactly will they be doing at newton and all those mm-hmm. things so i had to figure out the right people uh figure out the right platforms and then uh, eventually onboard those people as well got it so yeah i was able to onboard i think 24 25 people in a day oh wow uh, very nice yeah and did you have a personal network around it or you this was just cold outreach that you did uh most of it was cold outreach a couple of them were uh, out of my network as well but yeah mostly cold outreach interesting i yeah. think it's a good segue for me to you know just ask you to spend some time on what are the skills that are really needed in in a role like yours right where problem statements could be as ambiguous as new as they can get right so tell me a little about the skill sets that are needed to be effective in this role typically we look at two to three uh, skill sets that a person should have mm-hmm. in a generalist role or a program manager founders office role first of all problem solving skills mm-hmm. uh, if the person is smart enough to solve the problem if they have ample amount of ideas to probably test their hypothesis hypothesis or probably come to a conclusion or come to a solution for the problem as well second is clarity of thought or structured thinking how exactly are you able to structure your thoughts if you are able to uh, think of all the edge cases think of all the use cases that would, that the problem would throw at you mm-hmm. the third would be stakeholder management because you aren't really owning any kpis uh, since it's a generalist role you are okay. no one no one is effectively reporting to you so you need to align all the stakeholders probably it, it can be marketing sales product tech whichever team you are working with so those are the top 3 skills that i would say are required for the role interesting and do you check for these as well while you are on the other side and now hiring people yeah so uh, typically we use case studies to check problem solving etc Stru- structured thinking is again one thing that uh, we can probably test through the case studies or exact uh, or their past work experience mm-hmm. uh, stakeholder management is again one thing that we typically do uh, check during ref checks or a hypothetical problem that we share with them so you said it's a mix of like you know you check for problem solving via case studies and also through the conversations to have yeah. to check for structured thinking and uh, i'm guessing a lot of how they present themselves is how you also gauge a little bit of uh, stakeholder management is that probably right? yeah Understood. so uh, stakeholder management is one thing that you it's a part of your personality as well mm-hmm. and probably you uh, gain it over time too correct if you are let's say an experienced professional you have 4 5 years of work experience so probably we'll dive uh, dive deep into the work you have had the projects you have done in your past companies if let's say you are a fresher coming out of college we would probably talk about the uh, let's say a project that you did in your college or typically how exactly you are approaching the problem there are correct. some signs that you can check during the interview process understood understood yeah. and um, i want you to elaborate on this one thing which you mentioned earlier right like what challenges does this role bring because of course like it's multifaceted but at the same time as you said like you don't own anything in some yeah. sense right so what are the challenges related to this so the biggest challenge that you face in the role is again stakeholder alignment if you're working with a sales team you are working with people who have worked in sales for the last 5 6 10 years correct so probably they have more experience they have more knowledge about the sales uh, side of things than than you would have right correct so you need to uh, come up with let's say lo- logical uh, logical arguments you need to come up with data you need to back your arguments with a lot of uh, logical pointers to probably put your case uh, in front of let's say the teams that you're working with it can be sales marketing whatever uh, second thing that i would probably uh, highlight that that's that's a problem with the role or probably a challenge that you face during your tenure as uh, in the role uh, would probably be context switching so since you're working on a lot of problems at the same time since you're working on a lot of critical problems at the same Correct. time as well you need to switch context in probably let's say a day or a few hours or 
probably a few minutes as well <laughs> so yeah that those are the two biggest problems that you face and again figuring out a lot of stuff uh, talking to a lot of people really helps so let's say if you are facing a lot of problems uh, setting up a sales process or a marketing process the best way to go about it is to talk to people who have uh, done this in the past you know i'm still trying to wrap my head around because uh, this role right it is very misunderstood in some sense it right. could mean anything <laughs> and everything right i mean uh, i remember this one common friend of ours when he was a part of the founders office team his literal job was to make like the office of the founders right i mean in, in terms of like the yeah. infra that was needed to set up the new office it could range from that to as strategic as you know okay these are the different lines of businesses this is how we are going to project our growth story to you know then fundraising right and i'm sure you've spoken to other people yeah. in founders office as well how should one really think about this role that hey should i like do i want to do this am i good enough for this you you pointed out a very interesting thing so uh, uh the founders office role is different in each and every company different mm-hmm. in uh, different stages of companies as well okay let's say if you're joining a seed stage or a pre seed uh, seed stage startup so you will be solving very trivial problems as well very very different problems as compared to let's say a founders office in swiggy or zomato or the the big conglomerates i joined newton when it uh, just had raised series a so we had a, a business mo- basic business model we had uh, a good revenue we had a pretty solid team as well mm-hmm. but now we had to grow faster now we had to uh, scale probably the team was 50 we would have uh, now we are a team of 300 people in the uh, span of 2 years so we had to figure out different things so you were working on a different uh, on, a, on a lot of different problem statements like i said it, it's a very unstructured role but structured at the same time because you are working on a couple of problem statements at the same time right so their scope is defined but probably the scope for the role is not defined it depends on company to company what exactly does the company want out of a founder and just and yeah. and did you attempt or did you have an experience of solving these kind of problems before uh not exactly so then how do i present myself as this person who can do these things right i mean first of all you can during the interviews during the conversations mm-hmm. you are having with the people in the company you can probably put your case forward uh, by let's say highlighting a couple of things that you have done with a particular project what how exactly did you figure out that problem proof of concept is effectively mm-hmm. what everyone needs right either it can be an assignment during the interview process or it can be your past work ex or your past Understood. project that you have done go as uh, deep into the project as you can highlight all the small nitty gritties of the project as well so that the, the person can understand how exactly you solved the problem what was your approach to uh, towards it and obviously if uh, let's say there is an assignment in the interview process solve it as diligently as you can uh, as exhaustively as you can as well i think interesting point you mentioned right help us understand a little about the growth trajectory as well what have you seen the path for a few people in this role from my experience and from what i've talked to a lot of people as well uh typically the founders office role is uh, probably a 2 3 years role not okay. more than that you eventually move out to a a specialist role you move out to let's say a growth role or a product role or a marketing role apart from that let's say if you working in the role if you have let's say 4 5 6 years of work experience and depending on where your company is it eventually grows into a chief of staff role as well mm-hmm. which is again an extension of the executives in the company you are figuring out you are probably solving uh a lot of people problems you are figuring out if they have the bandwidth uh, or if they're aligned with the okrs that the company has typically that's the growth trajectory that's how you move out of the role uh either you become a specialist or you, uh, you grow into the role or you become a chief of staff understood understood have you spoken to people any of your friends who are in the founders office role grow into these positions yep so uh if if you take my example i have moved out into a product role uh one of my friends mo- moved into a head of sales operations role Got so it. there are a lot of people who have moved to different different uh, parts so in my company there were three founders office people when i joined in uh i have moved to a product growth role the other one has moved to a category manager role and the third one is a product manager on the learning side of it so all three of us have moved to specialist roles now since the company requires that at the moment understood yeah and would you say like founders office will always be required irrespective of the stage of the company i think yes because there are a lot of problems that need to be solved ad hoc or probably let's say if you are launching new projects you would uh, need problem solvers right you would mm. need people who can move fast who can do zero to one or who can probably take up different problem statements at different points in time the criticality of the role is probably higher in the early stage startups if let, let's say series b series mm. c beyond that uh, there are very small sections of the uh, problems or the departments that you you'd be looking at or you'll be looking at gtms of different problems very specific problems yeah 
but i th- i think it will be required uh, at all stages i want to now you know be like this younger person who wants to join this role right so how do i go about it like any uh, suggested practice anything how i can build myself up so that i can present myself as this good a uh, candidate for a founders office role there are majorly three buckets that any interview looks at for a mm-hmm. founders office role problem solving structured or let's say clarity of thought uh, and the third would be stakeholder management so you can let's say if you are fresh out of college you wouldn't have worked anywhere probably you've done a couple of internships wherein you wouldn't have a lot of ownership in the projects that you were doing right so probably what you can do is you would have done something in college in terms of let's say managing a fest or let's say prob uh, So a- imagine I'm not from a college which had like a large fest, right? Then how do I go about it? What I would recommend is probably do a side project. Probably do let's say whatever you have done in the past, you would have mm-hmm. done some sort of a project, right? Probably maintaining let's say a celebration for the society or whatever. You you just need to show that ownership. You you just need to show that rigor that and be as detailed as possible that this is what you did. Apart from that, probably if you have to let's say. talk about stakeholder management have you worked with different teams have you worked with different teammates etc how did you handle those situations how did you uh, handle let's say an impasse where in uh, probably they were suggesting some solution and you had another solution in mind how exactly did you come to a conclusion you have to uh, probably highlight those when you're talking to the person or talking to the interviewer i want to you know uh, make it a little interesting here i'm interested in a founders office role at newton school how would you suggest i go about it what's the proof of work the passion project or hobby project that i can do which will make you believe that hey i probably have it in me to make it to the founders office at newton the best way to go about it is to reach out to the founders uh, or probably reach out to the people who are handling uh, the hiring process let's say the talent acquisition team or the people who are working in the role or uh, who are reporting to the person who is let's say a founders office right now okay so the more the merrier the more people you reach out to the the higher the chances of getting a crack at the interviews now coming to uh, the other question how exactly uh, let's say what kind of projects that in, that i need to do uh, you don't need to have a specific wh- whatever you've done in the past let's say assuming that you're applying for newton school today you can't really do a project in one day right sure uh, yeah. and if you let's say take a couple of months probably the role will be filled so whatever you have done in the past it can be as small as possible let's say you have handled a dance choreography team in your college or probably you have played for a basketball team in your college etc uh, or you probably have handled a fest or let's say an event in the fest or whatever apart from that if you have done a project in the past you can probably create let's say a one pager or attach your slides or whatever you have created for the project that, that this is how i approach the problem statement this is what i did for the solution and you can just share it with the the cold outreach that you're doing with the team you mentioned that you know i will have to reach out to people for doing this right so uh, would you tell that it's a necessary element that you should be able to reach out to people set up conversations find your way in as a necessary skill of a found person in the founders office so like i said resourcefulness is something that is required in the role right mm-hmm. uh, and let's say if you if i'm looking for a job in the founders office role with my personal network i'd probably be able to reach out to three four founders have connects with them or have conversations with them but let's say uh, my dream company or the companies that i would want to work in or the role let's say that, that i would want to work in uh i probably will have to fight for that right i have to reach out to the founders it probably might not be in my uh, personal network or people i know Mm-hmm. so i have to reach out to those people and resourcefulness figuring out wh- what their email address is figuring out the people in the organization who would probably be handling the hiring for this role uh that's again a part of the role so resourcefulness problem solving it's, it's again correlated thanks so much for sharing this jay for someone who again is an aspirant right mm. it can get a little overwhelming simply because different types of expectations from a founders office in one organization or say i want to apply to three four companies everybody is looking at different skill sets right uh what is your suggestion to you know someone uh, who is wanting to apply to these roles such that at least they get a short list or be get the chance to present themselves to these founders right L- like i highlighted that there are different the different expectations from different uh, in different organizations mm-hmm. in the founders office role right let's say uh, first of all you'll obviously drill down uh, to a sector or a company that you would probably want to work at right uh, so first of all identification of the companies you would probably want to work with 
it can be a seed stage startup or it can be the swiggy or matters of the world as well so uh, let's say if you're applying to a startup which is pre seed or seed they'll have a lot of problems which uh, require a lot of uh, mo- moving fast right you you will have to solve a lot of problems at the same time you'll probably be working five six uh, working at five six problems at the same time mm-hmm. uh, so you need to highlight the breadth of work that you have done in the past how exactly did you handle uh, critical situations or probably panic situations where you came out of it successful or whatever yeah. so uh, that is for if i'm applying for, for say an early pre seed seed yeah. kind of startup so yeah. you need to display breadth more than depth because you need to grow faster or you need to sure. move faster at that point handle right? more things at yeah. once yeah uh, or let's say if you're applying to a, a later stage startup you need to uh, showcase depth more than breadth because they you'll be working on one or two projects at one point in time you will be uh, there will be processes set up for that particular mm-hmm. um, team that you're working with if you are let's say writing a cold email you need to highlight that in uh, the cover letter that you're writing or uh, writing or what uh, or an email that you're writing to the person understood yeah sure i think thanks jay this has been very helpful for you know sharing uh, all that you know about founders office and yeah it was great having you here thanks thanks a lot bro for having me